Today I'm going to report activity number 15, Newton cradle. According to the problem statement, the oscillation of the Newton cradle will gradually decay until the spheres come to rest. Investigate how the rate of decay of the Newton cradle depends on relevant parameters, such as number, materials, and element of the spheres. And this is my catalog. The first is a preliminary experiment. The second one is zero analyst. The third one the third one is experiment analyst, the fourth one is error analyst, and the last one is my conclusion. This is a video of my preliminary experiment. According to the video, we can see that the fifth ball is lifted at basically the same height as the first one. And the balls in the middle have little swing. We build our model based on the video. And the order deformation of the two balls is not elastic deformation. And S guy is the position of the ice ball. V is the velocity of the ice ball. And DI is the compressed distance between the ice and the case ball. AI is the acceleration of the ice ball. We build our theory based on Hertz context. And according to Newton's sixth law, we can have this equation. And the 3 over 2 here is a growth index. And the first term is a press from the behind. And the second is a re resistance from the front. And the last one is the effect of gravity. And k here is that. And a is Young's modulus. V is Poisson's ratio. And kj is equal to mj over l. And if you we want to use the differential equations to solve this, to analyze this motion, it will have over 20 variables. And also, this, this equation can only analyze one series of strike. So we decided to use SOLIDWORKS to simulate the motion of the Newton cradle. And the theory behind the SOLIDWORKS is a finite element analysis. And the finite element analysis is to divide the, divide the modulus, modul, model into many small parts. And each part has their own differential equation and their, own, and their initial conditions. And it can code the value answer of the each time step, and finally use iteration to simulate the whole motion of the Newton grid. And the advantage of this simulation is that it can it can simulate multiple cycles motion, and also it uses iteration to solve equations. This is the video of our simulation. According to the graph and the video, we can see that the fifth sphere is lifted basically at the same height as the first one. And also the balls in the middle are not completely stiff. All these two phenomena coincide with our preliminary experiment. And the reasons for the, fir <coughs> for the, the final balls lift at the same height as the first one is that if two identical balls collide with in a perfectly elastic collision, they will change, they will exchange their velocity. And the velocity change will like this. First, the first ball has a velocity change to the second one, the third one, to the fourth one, and then to the final one. So the final one has the same amplitude as the first one. But in the real case, it is not a uh, elastic collision. Instead, it is a uh, non-elastic collision. So the vol velocity is not perfectly exchanged. The first ball will have a, uh, the first ball will have a, initial velocity and the final ball have a final velocity and all balls will press with each other and, and all three balls in the middle will have residual speed. If we want to try to calculate the speed here, we need to use this equation or we can just export the data from the SOLIDWORKS. And we can see that residual speed increases and amplitude decreases. We just use tracker to tra track the motion of the balls. And the number of the balls in our Newton crystal is five. The radius of the ball is one centimeter. The density of the ball is 7,870 kilograms per cubic meter. And the strain length is 15 centimeter. The ruler here is to, uh, here is to help us control the releasing distance and the division value of the ruler is 0 0.1 millimeter. And the map here is to help tracker to track the motion of the ball. The releasing distance here is, uh, means that the distance between the initial position of the first ball and the releasing position of the first ball, like that. 
And this is our view of experiment. We change the resistance distance from 10 millimeters to 60 millimeters. And this is our data. We control the resistance distance to one centimeter and change the number of the ball in the Newton's cradle. And we find that with the number of the balls increasing, the decay rate de increases because more balls lead to more energy loss. And also, we call this the total time of decay of the four experiments. And we found that the fewer balls the longer period because the fewer balls lead to less energy is lost in the one period so that the period becomes shorter. And also we, we control the resistance distance to one centimeter. And we change the release ball from one to four. We can see that the more balls released lead to longer decay time because the more balls are released, the more energy the system will get, leading to the longer decay time. And also in our experiment, we found some special phenomena. If the, if the two balls has no cut glue connection, the final two balls will swing at the same amplitude. But if we use hot glue to, to connect the first two balls, the final two balls will have different amplitude. Also, in four balls, uh, Newton's credo will also have this phenomenon. To analyze this phenomenon, we build a model based on our video. The first ball will swing from this position to this position. And all the two balls will have the velo same velocity v. And the mass of the three balls is m. So the vel velocity of the second ball will transfer to the third. And the velocity of the first ball will transfer to the second ball. So that the final two balls have the same vel velocity and they will swing at the same amplitude. But if we use hot glue to connect the first two balls, they will swing from this position to this position. And the third ball's mass is m. But, but this time, we need to regard the first two balls as a whole part, and they will have a common velocity v. And they will have a mass of 2m. So the first part will have 1 over 3v, and the third ball will have 4 over 3v. And if we want to analyze a non elastic collision, we need to consider uh, energy loss. According to our data form, we found that our theoretical value is always smaller than, the, than that from the experiment. Because in the real case, uh, the ball actually rotates about a non-fixed point, and, the rotation, and there, there are rotation dampers, and the rotation damper does work. But in our simulation, the ball will rotate about a fixed point, and there is no rotation damper, and the rotation damper does not work. Energy loss caused by the rotation damper caused the theoretical value is always smaller than the experimental value. And also I have other error. First, the balls are not completely in contact without press. The second one is the releasing the ball by our hand, the, the, the balls by our hand will affect the initial velocity of the ball. The third is the root accuracy is 0.5 millimeters. And the time accuracy is 1 over 240 seconds. And our conclusion is that the non elastic collision among the balls and the rotation damper cause the decay. The simulation from the SOLIDWORKS can simulate this motion. The fewer balls or the, uh, or the farther release distance or the more balls released will lead to the longer decay time. And if we connect balls in Newton cradle, the identical ball sequence will be destroyed and the phenomenon will change. This is my reference. Thanks for listening.